Hi everyone, JC here with Autocrit and welcome to What's the Score? A series where we take famous authors and put them to the test with the Autocrit editing system. This time we're taking on The Martian by Andy Weir. So are you ready for a bestseller breakdown? We're back once more with the Autocrit scalpel in hand ready to get surgical and see just what's under the hood of another best-selling novel through the magic of our own unique standout fiction algorithm. This dissection will put this entry's chosen title under the microscope for two reasons. Number one, so that you can benefit from a curiosity-sating satisfaction of a sneaky insight into the block-by-block -block makeup of a hugely successful novel. Number two, so you can apply that knowledge as a frame of reference for your own work as you put it through the paces using Autocrit. We'll show you exactly how Autocrit reacts to our chosen novel and the kinds of recommendations it makes for improving the text. Bear in mind that this is a full copy of a published book that's being tested, and it's by no means a first draft. As a book from a major publishing house, the work you're about to see will have in fact already been professionally edited within an inch of its life. The question is, could it be improved? And what kind of final score could one expect from a book that's already proven itself so worthy in the world of fiction? Starting off on the default fiction setting, the overall score for The Martian might seem quite alarming for those of you who strive to hit for the bleachers with your editing. As we discovered last time though, a higher score doesn't necessarily mean a lower quality of writing. It's all about the finer points. The score of 78.65 isn't far out from the low 80s average we do tend to see here for chart-topping novels, so the alarm bells aren't ringing quite yet. The fingerprint analysis is where we look to get information on Autocrit's recommended areas of greatest editing import. The higher the percentage, the more indicators there are in that section that could do with some brushing up. For The Martian, strong writing, word choice, and repetition are where most offending matter lies, so we're going to need to take a good hard look at those. First though, let's hit pacing and momentum and dialogue to see what's so good over there. First up, slow paced paragraphs. Good stories tend to include a mix of fast and slow paced sections. The Autocrit system is capable of detecting just how many slow sections are on your work and will warn you if things appear to be too much of a slog for readers. Happily for Weir, The Martian comes home with a mere 4.76% of detected slow paragraphs, slightly lower than we saw in the action-packed Hunger Games. It isn't hard to see that there are likely few to no problems in terms of pacing here, as anyone who has read Weir's novel can attest. A core function in pacing is sentence and paragraph length, so we'll check those out next. Here we can see that a mere 41 sentences appear to be more than 30 words long, a staggering low 0.34% of the entire book. The vast majority of sentences don't even breach 20 words. What can we tell from this? The book is likely a fast-paced affair or often frantic in its action. If we inspect the sentence variation in the chart format, we can see that while the sentences generally contain a low number of words, the book still has that visual roller coaster appearance that we like to see. Regular peaks and troughs instantly emerge. Where the larger spikes appear, it's almost as if you can see the act breaks, like signposted intermissions. Note how Weir manages the storytelling framework with a quick, exciting opening before calming the reader down with a short, longer section. And then speeding up the action again so you have a spike close to the start, a spike at the end of Act 1, and another at the end of Act 2, and a smaller one in the finale as the reader is eased back out to the real world. This chart can sometimes be confusing as you're running through your editing pass, but really all you need to look out for are flat block-like sections. You'll want to take a closer look at those, but if your story rolls in ups and downs like you see here, chances are you're in good shape. A wealth of dialogue tags other than said or asked are often the bane of many an amateur novelist. As we can see, Weir most definitely does not fall within that umbrella. He does employ some alternatives, but the likes of replied and reported, the most common non-standard tags, are easy to accept in moderation. They are used with such infrequency that quite frankly, we'd give this report an instant pass when it comes to the Martian. The tag radioed is a little strange, so it might be worth taking a moment to pop into the editor and bring up the point where that one has been used just to see if it's been employed correctly. You may notice that even said and asked are marked as overused. This is a function that's based off 
off their frequency against the length of text compared to the average of successful novels. Both the author and the editor would understand that this may be considered a dialogue heavy book. If that's the case for yours too, then there's nothing to worry about. Similarly lacking in any real concern is Weir's use of adverbs in his dialogue tags. We can see that excitedly seems to be a little overused, even if it does only appear a total of three times. It could be worth checking that out to see if it's weakening the text at any point. A quick little win. Overall though, the dialogue is looking good, so let's hit the problem areas. Yes, the road to hell is paved by adverbs, but is the Martian going down that path? In the larger scheme, it doesn't appear to be. Weir's use is excellent, well below average, but when you drill down, there looks to be some room for improvement. The word really is often a crutch, lacking in punch and serving only to bolster a weak word that would better be switched for a stronger one. Spending some time chasing that up in the editor could be a major win for Weir. Of course there's a range of overused adverbs there, but it shouldn't take long to pop through and see if they're stinking up the prose. The former can be fixed, while the latter is entirely up to the author's final say. Up next, showing versus telling. It looks like we're in the danger zone here, so pay close attention to the most frequent indicators. Given the marked items, it's likely these were flagged in this particular manuscript due to being above average in use. Something we also saw in the Hunger Games that's very common with first person narratives. A certain amount of telling is indeed necessary there, more than you'd expect with a third person perspective. After all, much of the Martian is supposed to be the words of a person via logs with their own likely informal pattern of speech. The lack of more interactive words being highlighted here, such as heard or felt, gives us sufficient reason to not get too hung up on this particular report. The next section, however, is definitely ripe for some pruning. The number of filler words detected in the Martian is hitting the red zone, and it's a little surprising to see the all too common packing peanut, the word jest. It's almost certain that a nice chunk of those could be excised to no detriment of the manuscript. It's a remarkably close result to the Hunger Games. Moving beyond fillers, we see that cliches and redundancies are well within the acceptable parameters. Redundancies especially. There could of course still be room for improvement, so let's take a look at the cliche list within the editor itself. Going out on a limb, we'd assume that the liberal use or perhaps the overuse of the word okay is down to the narrator's natural speech, but there might be some possible tweaks there. Looking for example at instances where it repeats a little too close together for comfort. Terms like in the air or on the surface can likely be ignored given the setting or scientific references, but these would certainly be worthy of further investigation. Passive voice indicators come in just above average for the Martian, with far and away the most common being the use of have. With large sections of the novel being something of a recollection of events, a certain amount of passivity is given, and falling around in the middle of the scale shows that Weir likely has good control over how he's relaying his story. Had it been any higher, we would have been worried that things were sliding too much into a disconnected or uninvolving reminiscence. Weir's novel takes a hard hit when it comes to generic descriptions. We're in the Martian red zone once again. Now why is that? Looks like way too much sprinkling of good in there. That's a really weak word and look what it's paired with in the results. Pretty, big, great, and nice. It almost looks like a laundry list of non-committal phrases. Yeah, it's pretty good, I've got a nice big dinner. When this kind of result shows up in your generic descriptions report, it's time to grab a coffee and get to work. Remember though, The Martian is a first person narrative, so you might get away with this kind of thing within that framework as long as you don't make your protagonist seem boring or vapid. The only way to tell is to get stuck in and edit, edit, edit. The next in line for an inspection is repetition. The Martian takes a little bit of pounding for this one, but you can see right off the bat that a lot of this repetition is likely necessary. We have words such as rover, have, soul suit, and airlock, all scientific and all relevant to what's happening in the story, they've simply been used too frequently in comparison to most other fiction. Usually this wouldn't be too much of a problem, but if we compare the results of The Martian to that of The Hunger Games, which also made regular use of terminology unique to its setting, the amount of repetition does seem high. What do we do then? We take a visit to the editor and pop those words into the personal word selection so that we can get an easy visual overview. Adding a few of these terms and tracking them in the editor, it wouldn't take long to find where instances could be trimmed. 
Sure, some might be nitpicking, but we can edit so that our words are as refined as possible. Spending the time to run through each of these words individually simply by ticking or unticking them in Autocrit's editor sidebar could pay dividends in the long run. If it turns out that changes aren't necessary, that's also a positive, because we know that this particular report isn't anything to be concerned about. That's the important thing. With Autocrit, the author is completely in control and free to make what they feel are the best judgments for their work, given the raw and intimate data it serves up. But there's also something else we can do. If rather the specific terminology is having a seriously negative effect on the overall score, we can exclude the words entirely from Autocrit's reporting. Let's do that. The result is a much better looking repetition report, where we can see that character names are among the top most commonly used words. Suit, which had our attention earlier, is now right up there with the top frequencies. This would make it a surefire target for some deep inspection. But how does removing specific words we targeted ultimately translate to the Martian summary score? Not a huge leap, right? It's an interesting result, but primarily indicative that the structure that encases these words, the foundational build of the Martian storytelling, is strong overall. It doesn't unravel and leap around the scoring chart just because those words have been removed, something that's a clear sign they were flagged because they're generally uncommon in fiction. Still without them, the score went up, and that's nice to see. Repetition is also a concern when it comes to sentence starters. Starting off with conjunction, for example, is perfectly fine, but use the same one too often in succession and things are quickly going to get rocky. With 10.31% of sentences in the Martian beginning with such a starter, let's take a look at them in detail. The word but definitely leads the way here, yet taking a quick scroll through the manuscript, we don't see many instances where highlighted words are clustered. Where they are, as you can see in the example screenshot by the word if, is intentionally used for effect by Weir. Again, here's an example where coffee and a simple editing session can see you both clean up your writing and achieve peace of mind. In the case of The Martian, our interrogation in this respect ends with a thumbs up. One of the newer functions of Autocrit is the ability to get a quick overview of your use of point of view, a way to help you easily pinpoint places where you might be inadvertently head hopping. Say for example, a small cluster of first person indicators followed by a small cluster of third person and then another small cluster of first person. These are color coded for easy overview. Given the Martian does jump from first to third person perspectives, let's take a look at the readings. Plenty of green tags can be seen here, which at a snap indicates that this is a first person passage. With a quick read, we can tell that yes, it is. But scroll ahead a little, and it seems like an abrupt shift to second person. With inspection, it turns out it isn't. The narrator has merely begun to describe things without referring to themselves. Perfect. It reads fine, the narration thread never being lost, that's a bullet dodged. Further on, we come to an entirely blue section. This should be third person, and it is. It's a quick chapter sandwiched between two first person ones, so it might be a good idea to check the chapters surrounding those don't just hop back and forth. This report won't actually influence the overall score of the novel, but it's handy to demonstrate it with something like The Martian. Even if you don't go into great detail with this one in your own work, it's always worth a quick skim through to see if you're nicely balancing that changing perspective. Finally, let's take a look at the summary score for the closest genre comparison for The Martian, science fiction and fantasy. The score bumps ever so slightly in this mode, achieving a higher score than the romance and young adult categories, yet level pegging on suspense and mystery. That's a solid side of alignment with the goals of the novel, and perfectly fitting given the baseline score. If the highest upward trend is within your target genre, chances are you're onto a winner. And what if we check it with those personal words we picked out from earlier? The result is not all that far from the bestseller watermark of 80. As a bonus, let's check the readability stats for The Martian. Dropping in with a flesh reading ease score of 79, The Martian proves accessible at a 7th grade level. It's actually right on the border of 6th grade ability. Basic conversational English. And yet, with the smash hit success of The Martian and the subsequent translation to the silver screen, it may be with a slight sense of horror that you perceive a final score like the one you see above. But what's important isn't just the overall score, it's the nuts and bolts of the fingerprint analysis. With the results of careful compartmental dissection the Autocrit makes so easily accessible, every book is different and every book stands to improve in its own way. 
and every book has its own quirks that only you as the author can decide how to smooth into the overall landscape of the story. So should you see a score like the one achieved for The Martian, don't be dismayed. Utilize every report and Autocrit's unparalleled flexibility to confirm that you're as refined as you can be for the needs of your tell. Don't overstress because as you can see right here, you might very well be sitting on a potential blockbuster, even if you haven't broken through the 80 point threshold yet. When you feel the job is done, enlist your human editor to tighten up the rest and get ready for takeoff. So that's what happens when you bring together Autocrit and Andy Weir's The Martian. It's a whole other world of editing power. From all of us here at Autocrit, thanks for watching.